I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Uh, we've got a single presentation on orchard ecology, uh, some nematology, um, and then three IPM presentations and then questions and answers, and I believe we'll give you tea after that. Um, just to get going, um, I'm just going to present on a quite a long project, uh, part of which was a master's uh, study by Anseli Turon, and I'm kind of presenting on her, her behalf. It's a summary. There's a huge amount of data in here. Anyway, without further ado, let me get going. Um, it was carried out in, in two sites, um, one in Koerbokefeld, one in Varenbokefeld. Uh, there were five treatments uh, involved in it. Um, basically, we established uh, four, four cover crop treatments, and there were four bunky treatments. Um, we then surveyed and measured as much as we could. Um, part of the study was looking at calembola, very primitive insects that live on, on and in on soil surfaces and in, in soils. Uh, and an add-on towards the end of the study, uh, and I'll give you the, the data, was looking at honeybees and flowering cover crops. The treatments were as follows. Apologies to the people at the back, this is small. But basically, out of the four treatments, uh, and you can see them horizontally at the top, these were the work row treatments. Basically, treatment one was, was three species of grass. Two, we added uh, a medic uh, to the mix. Three, we added a medic and a subterranean clover. And then treatment four was uh, what we refer to as our diverse cover crop. I was pushing uh, to measure what plant diversity does to soil health uh, on the, the basic understanding. A healthy, a healthy soil is going to be more sustainable, resilient, and should certainly give you more more production. Sorry, this thing is now skipped. No, it's getting worse. There we go. Sorry. Um, the uh, the row treatments. Treatment one was just compost and mulch. Treatment two was compost and wood chips. Three was a green cover crop. Um, with a medic and a subterranean clover, and then four uh, was diverse, as diverse as we could get it. And we planted triticale in our work rows at 20 kilos a hectare, or equivalent of 20 kilos a hectare. The parameters, uh, and part of the study was just feeling out what you can, can measure. Cover crop performance, uh, the actual performance of the flowers, plus a whole lot of uh, Small-scale trials that yielded nice results, biomass production, uh, literally dry mass per area. Soil analyses consisted of Haney tests plus, 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 a lot. They were comprehensive via NEMLAB. Uh, we did nematode biodiversity via NEMLAB, and that was a really good measure. It was consistent over time. It gave a bunch of data back. Bacterial and fungal biodiversity. Difficult to interpret, uh, but was interesting. Plant biodiversity. Remember, we planted once, and then there was a succession uh, and lots of shifts and changes within uh, those, those treatments. Litter breakdown, and we used leaves from those crops, so we used apples, apple and apple orchard <coughs> and pear leaves and pear, pear orchards. Calembola biodiversity. Uh, and then bees and cover crops. Soil quality parameters, there was a bunch of stuff. Uh, and some, one of those orchards, we ran it for five years. So we took annual uh, soil, soil sample, uh, five per treatment at the same locations. Um, I think it suffice to say, to summarize, treatments had high values for uh, soil quality parameters, with the exception of NH4. 
and soil food web structure indices at the end of the trial in 2021 than in comparison to when we started 2017-2018. That's a very broad statement. If you need details, the thesis is almost finished. Uh, the Kalemba showed us all sorts of stuff. Some were positively correlated with litter breakdown. I think it's really important. Uh, what, and, and some weren't. We either need to abandon them as indicators or get more data and find the indicators that are, are relevant. They're fairly difficult to count and they're quite difficult uh, to collect as well. Uh, the honeybees, very simply, uh, we mowed out rows that had flowers in them at the time of blossom and we compared that to rows with lots of, lots of flowers in the cover crop uh, to dispel this or, or to answer the question of, okay, is it beneficial or not? Are your flower visitations, blossom visitations better with a flowering cover crop? And they are. Uh, the bottom left-hand uh, graph indicates, and on the right-hand side of that, you can see our blossom visitations uh, during the first season of testing, and then in the second season of testing, there were even more flowers in the cover crop. Uh, we had very good retention in, that, uh, in those orchards with flowers. Uh, that was yeah, heartening to see, interesting, and we're going to pursue that further, incidentally. Uh, just to give you an idea uh, of Kalembala, they're really small. They're in the litter, you've got to collect them. They're fascinating. There was a, a parallel uh, thesis done on, on Kalembala uh, as well, more taxonomic at the same time. Uh, fairly problematic, but, but interesting. Um, I'd just like to thank Hortgro and ZZ2. I don't know who learned more. I learned a huge amount. Um, operating in their orchards. And just to conclude, uh, yeah, people picked it up uh, and used it. That's a full green orchard on, on one of the ZZ2, uh, one of the ZZ2 orchards. Uh, what are the take homes? Better pest control, very definitely. Um, and yeah, much less nitrogen being applied uh, and a more sustainable uh, certainly on the bunker, a more sustainable system running. If you need details, please contact me and the research is ongoing.